Dr. T. Delbert Robinson, Lady Jasmine Robinson, Overseers Bishop Paul S., and Dr. Deborah B. Morton, and Changing a Generation invites you to join our virtual experience Sundays at 11 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Atlanta and from Greater St. Stephen. Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central Time from New Orleans. Stream with us on Facebook Live, YouTube, Apple TV, and Roku. Dr. T. Delbert Robinson. He's really causing us to rethink so that we can retool and be repurposed. And maybe today, after a year of not having been in church, perhaps the question on your table is, can the dry bones of your life live again? Lady Jasmine Robinson and the Greater Change family growing together. One church in two states. In Atlanta, CAGnow.org and New Orleans, houseofgreater.org. Coming up on Greater Change Ministries. Somebody say, I'm anointed and the enemy is bothered. He's bothered. He's bothered. Nevertheless, kingdom believers, we have to continue to be identifiable. Don't let the enemy make you hide who you are in Christ. Yes, yes, we have to be so confident in who we are and know that Satan knows this too. And so when he calls us out of our name, no matter what he says, be confident that you have the dunamis power or the ability through Jesus to shut him up. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. From Changing a Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, one church in two states, pastored by Dr. T. Delbert Robinson, along with Lady Jasmine Robinson, and overseers Bishop Paul S. Morton, and Dr. Deborah B. Morton welcome you to The Greater Change Outreach Ministry. Now, prepare for a life-changing experience. Well, God bless you, people of God. We thank God for you. Welcome to the Greater Change Telecast. I'm Dr. T. Delbert Robinson, Senior Pastor of the Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church of New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as Changing a Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia. And we are one church in two states. I'm super excited today, and I know some of you are saying, where is his wife? I know you're looking for Elder Lady Jasmine Morton Robinson. She's also known as Lady J, but today she's on assignment. Uh, she preached a word like no other. She is a preaching woman of God. And I'm not just saying that because she's my wife, but in a couple of seconds, you will agree. Let's go in to New Orleans, the greater church. The mother church and hear a word from the woman of God, Lady J. She's going to bless you tremendously and I'll be back. Elder Jasmine Morton Robinson, there's another shut up inside of you. Luke chapter 4 verse 31 through 37, the amplified version. And the word of the Lord says, then he came down from the hills of Nazareth to Capernaum a city of Galilee on the shore of the sea. And he was teaching them on the Sabbath and, and they were surprised, almost overwhelmed at his teaching because his message was given with authority and power and great ability. There was a man in the synagogue though who was possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud and terrible voice, let us alone. What business do we have in common with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? 
I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, muzzled, gagged, and come out of him. And, and when the demon had thrown the man down among them, he came out of him without injuring him in any way. Somebody say, No injuries, no injuries. They were all astonished and in awe and began saying to one another, What is this message? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. This is where our text begins. Stay with me here. He's back in Capernaum where he previously performed miracles and he's ready to continue the work that he had begun. He was back in the local synagogue on Sabbath days, back having churches. We're back having church. Amazing the people with his teaching ability and the power in which he taught, kind of like our new pastor, Pastor Rob. And, and one Sabbath day, though, in the middle of service, I imagine they'd been enjoying sitting at the feet of Jesus, undistracted and completely tuned in to his teaching when the most disruptive distraction shows up in the form of a man with an unclean spirit. Are you with me? This demonic spirit interrupts the service with a loud outburst, but Jesus rises up, takes authority, and casts this unclean spirit out of the man. And the Bible says in verse 35 that he came out of him without injuring him in any way. And I want to center your attention on this particular verse this morning because I believe that what has attempted to destroy some of you, what has attempted to distract you and deter you from your destiny can come out of you and leave you with no injuries. Do I have any believers in the house? I know Halloween is tomorrow, but this ain't about no tricking nor treating. All I know is that today somebody needs to take authority over some unclean spirits, some unclean voices, some unclean environments, and some unclean repeat offenders that are trying to injure you. They're attempting to coexist with your spirit, but they're not of the spirit. And I came... This morning to help you walk in your God-given authority to silence every last unclean spirit in your life and tell you, here we go, there's another shut up inside of you. Yeah, 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 I know shut up is a bad word. I, I couldn't even say it as a child. I'm sorry, overseers. It's, it's rude. It's, it's blunt. It's impolite. It's bad-mannered. But the enemy is rude. He's blunt. He's impolite. And he's bad-mannered. And my assignment this morning is to stretch you to shut up some things in your life. Hallelujah. Any believers in the house? Yes, there's another one inside of you there's another shut up inside your mouth and as you step up or shift up i'm here to tell you you can and you will come out uninjured you have the same authority that jesus has to muzzle the unclean spirits in your life because they're eating away at your spirit and they're too loud in your ear Maybe it's the negative folk around you. Maybe it's the spirits of depression and anxiety that have a stronghold on you. Maybe it's that relationship that you know God didn't join together. Or the constant death threat in your ear, the death threat in your ear that keeps telling you you won't have long life. Or it's the constant fear that's been suffocating you and you can't seem to go forward. Or maybe it's the ongoing sickness in your body that won't let go or the small voices in your head that keep telling you you're just not good enough whatever it is whatever that thing is i've come to let you know that you have the authority to tell it all just as jesus did to hush yeah 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 like i said before my title you've got another shut up inside of you today people of god is the day to decree that you're gonna get your voice back and as you step up and as you shut them up, I speak from experience, they're going to step right out of your life and you won't be harmed. John 17 and 15 in the New Living Translation, right after Jesus says that we're in this world but not of this world, he prays to the Father and he says, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world but to keep them safe 
from the evil one. And I, I just have a feeling that's your prayer this morning. Just keep me safe, Lord. Yeah, yeah, I know I'll have to face some challenges, but just give me the strength to overcome them. Yes, I see you, Lord. I know I'll have to go through some suffering, but just give me the grace to endure it. Lord, I know that the enemy will attempt to come into my life, but the Bible says like a raging flood, I trust you to drive him away with your breath and I'll come out un injured any believers in the house this morning glory to God the Bible says that we have the right the right it's translated from the Greek word exousia the authority to the things pertaining to the kingdom yes yes it's the kingdom believers right to cast out unclean spirits because of the exousia that has been given to us through Jesus Christ but in order to manifest the same power in which Jesus operated in our text, there are three things that I observed that went down here in the synagogue that we can apply to our own situation. So I, I submit to you today three ways to step up that will guarantee a step out. Three ways to ensure the shut up inside of you is effective. As I studied this text, I, I, I vacillated between seeing Jesus as us, the believer in our text, but also as the man who'd come to church and had been taken over by this unclean spirit. But when I looked at us as Jesus in the text, the first thing that I saw was that Jesus was identifiable. Yes, yes, he was identifiable. And I admonish you today, believers, to be identifiable that's my first point what, what, what do you mean lady J? I, I mean the adversary must recognize the spirit of jesus within you yes you should be easily identified as a kingdom believer as a ministry we're teaching and we're preaching shifting toward everybody praying but can the enemy or that unclean spirit of depression find you on the prayer line or or, or can he find you sleeping in not ready for warfare does he know you to be that kind of believer or can he catch you slipping Verse 34 says, this unclean, unclean spirit says to Jesus, let us alone. What business do we have in common with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? And then the spirit says, I know who you are. This unclean spirit, the holy one of God. See, this unclean spirit knew exactly who Jesus was. No, he, he didn't call him by the name in which Jesus preferred to be addressed. Uh, John 13 and 13 lets us know that Jesus preferred master or Lord and, and the spirit called him holy one. It, it, it was sarcastic and offensive, but yet and still the spirit knew who Jesus was. But isn't that just like Satan to call you out of your name and try to take you down? Come on, you know how he does. Knowing good and well you're a believer, he'll call you poor. He'll call you weak. He'll call you dumb. He'll call you ugly. He'll call you fearful. He'll call you unworthy. He'll call you depressed. And if your spirit isn't all the way full, your almost empty spirit will start to receive it. The devil is a lie, but he, he only wants to get under your skin because he's bothered by your greatness. Yes, he's bothered by your belief in Christ and the strength that he continues and continues and continues to give you. He's bothered by your anointing. Somebody say, I'm anointed. And the enemy is bothered. He's bothered. He's bothered. Nevertheless, kingdom believers, we have to continue to be identifiable. Don't let the enemy make you hide who you are in Christ. Yes, yes, we have to be so confident in who we are and know that Satan knows this too. And so when he calls us out of our name, no matter what he says, be confident that you have the dunamis power or the ability through Jesus to shut him up. 2 Timothy first, uh, what, 1 and 7, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power of love, you know it, and a sound mind. You see, our adversary, every unclean spirit, needs to recognize that you are a believer and the authority by which you operate is literally a strong tower. The Bible says the righteous can run into it and they are safe yes 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 he should know that when he calls you weak that you really can do things through Christ who strengthens you all things that is that the Lord's grace is sufficient for you and his strength is actually made perfect in weakness 
Yes, yes, when he calls you sick, he should know that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. And calling you sick won't keep you sick. When he calls you broke, he better know that you know that your father is rich in houses and lands. And Deuteronomy 8 and 18 said he gives us the ability to bruise, produce wealth. Any believers in the house this morning receiving the word of the Lord. Overseer mother says all storms aren't bad. And I submit to you today that all bullies aren't bad. Because a bully and believer is necessary to defeat the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He may try and buck up against us, but we got to bully him right back. Because just like a bully, he'll try to make you feel worthless. But it's because he knows your worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll attempt to drag you to your lowest place. But because you are a believer, you better remind him that you're the head and not the tail. That you're above and not beneath. The beneath. Believers, he knows that we have the power of God working in and through us. And that greater is he than anything that he attempts to try to throw our way. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6 and 10 tells us to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power and to put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against his schemes. Listen, your defense game should be so strong that every time an unclean spirit tries to attack you, he should be prepared to be blocked by your filled up spirit. Anybody full of the spirit today? Come on, is the greater army in the house today? Pastor Rob says, don't just fill me up, but fill me up. Believers, you must be identifiable. Second thing I observed in our text was not only did this spirit identify Jesus, but the Jesus identified the unclean spirit. I said Jesus identified the unclean spirit. Not only must you be identifiable, but you have to number two, be able to identify the enemy. This is the second way you can step out for the step out, step up for the step out. Verse 34, this unclean spirit says to Jesus, I know who you are, and I realize that there's no break between this statement and the next statement, which is Jesus rebuking the demon and demanding him to come out of the man, which means Jesus recognized this was an evil spirit right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody said he didn't second guess himself. He, he didn't ask him to repeat himself. He didn't look to see if others heard it too. There wasn't even a whole lot of conversation. Jesus' rebuke was immediate and intentional. Somebody say immediate and intentional. People of God, you have to immediately recognize when it's an attack of the enemy on your life and be intentional in your response. Yeah, yeah, you've got to intend to cut him, not just with your own words, but with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. One of the enemy's tactics is to make you think he's not real. But as Jesus said to Simon Peter in Luke 22 and 34, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. Greater St. Stephen and friends, I've got an announcement for you. And I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you. But the enemy is very real with a very real plan to destroy you. But the enemy needs to clearly recognize your authority and you have to know and be mindful of his strategies. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It's a never ending game of tag and he's always vying to be it. But if you know his tactics, listen, people of God, you'll always win. I said, if you know his tactics, you'll always win. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. You have to know and believe, believers, that anything or anyone that speaks against God's word or is the opposite of what God's word says, it's the enemy. It's an unclean spirit. Satan lies and distracts you from the truth. John 8 and 44 says he's always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, it's consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. Anybody been tried by the enemy? Hey, but some of you need to reevaluate your relationships and your environments. This is a tough word for me. Who and what you allow in your space may just be too dirty for your built-up spirit. 
Reevaluate them. Reevaluate them. Your relationship should affirm what God says about you because you're made in his image. You should be nothing less than a reflection of God when you're with them. If you're full of gossip, if your mood shifts for the worse, you get down on yourself or your attitude gets nasty when you're with him, somebody say that's unclean. That's an unclean environment that produces unclean spirits. Is your time with them spent dwelling on ne negativity or is it forward thinking and positive conversation? Somebody say clean versus unclean. Are you your best self when you're with them or do you feel pitiful when you leave them? See, a full and a clean spirit will reject what an empty and unclean spirit projects. I'll say that again. A full and clean spirit will reject what an empty and unclean spirit projects. But I leave you with this. You've got to know the difference between what God says and what the enemy wants you to believe. Yes, the less you know of his word, the more power the enemy has to sow the wrong seeds into your life. But the more you know, the more authority you have to drive them out. Psalms 51 and 10 says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yeah, yeah, a clean heart and a right spirit has to be the daily goal. That's it, that's it. Our prayer call meditation has been coming from 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. And we've been reminded that God has the power to make us whole by putting together our spirit, our soul, and our body. So people of God, when unclean spirits make an appearance in your put together spirit, your put together soul and body, recognize them as that and call them out. Ask God for supernatural vision so you're able to quickly see and, and discern what's not of him versus what is of him. Listen, I don't care if it's hopelessness, a defeated mindset, stifling fear, suicidal thoughts, seemingly uncontrolled anxiety, pain that won't leave your body, repeated medical conditions, a spirit of power and poverty are not enough. Gossip, depression, liars, leeches, jealousy, envy, real life hate, sexual perversion, none of this aligns with God's word for the believer. Don't get so comfortable and familiar in your sin that you forget you're sleeping with the enemy. It feels good in the moment, but the enemy ain't looking out for you. And he's got three purposes. Three, to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I've got good news for you. If the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, then God comes to give, to save, and restore. Yes, we have access to a giver, a saver, and a restorer. So if there's anything in your life that's not giving, that's not saving, that's not restoring, Yell from under your mask, it's got to go! Glory, glory, glory to God. Because your step up, yeah, yeah, your shift towards prayer will shift you to only desiring what's good and perfect in your clean space. Sit down, I've got one more point. Hey, First, I told you you need to be identifiable. Then I told you you've got to identify the enemy. And my last point is, I say you got to get your shut up back inside of you. There's another one. My last point is you've got to silence the enemy. Where are my believer bullies? Come on, we as kingdom believers possess the power to silence the enemy and muzzle the unclean spirits that try to attach themselves to us. Jesus says in verse 35, you know it, be silent. Come out of the man. And when the demon had thrown the man down among them, he came out of him without injuring him in any way. They, they were astonished. They were in awe. They were like, what, what, what is this authority and power that he commands this unclean spirit to come out? People of God, it's imperative that we walk in our authority to not only identify the enemy, but we've got to silence him. We've got to shut him up. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yes, that's the word. Demons really can flee at your command, but it's going to take some resistance from you. You don't have time to play around. You don't have time to get comfortable. You don't have time to relax or take it easy. No resistance requires a fight on sight. I need you to boldly declare something today. Say, I have the power. I 
have the authority. I don't think I've ever had a physical fight in my life outside of with PJ. But listen, in the spirit, I'm a fighter. I'm going to give you a fight. I'm going to kick the devil in his head. I got another shut up inside of me, and I know that you do too. How do I have this power? Because once I accept Christ in my life, I'm able to walk in the same authority and ability to cast a demon out as Jesus did. I've got the same authority. Listen to this. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them the authority to cast out evil spirits. Come on, Kevin, I've got to go. Lift your hands if you're ready to see some things destroyed in your life. Come on, never to resurface again. Come on, you're ready to silence some noise that's been too loud in your ear. Give me more. You want to get rid of the uncleanliness in your life. And you're ready to come out like it never was. You ready to activate that shut up in your spirit. Come on, I need the intercessors to begin speaking in the Holy Ghost. I need believers who got it to begin speaking in the Holy Ghost. Give us shit, can you the vocal seat? Because your mouth is the enemy's muzzle. And your voice is his weapon of destruction. I said your mouth is the enemy's shut up. Your voice is his weapon of destruction. Come on, begin rebuking every stronghold. Every attack of the enemy. Come on, every struggle, every diagnosis, every rejection, every negative thought. And tell it by the power invested in me through Jesus. I release you because I've got another shut up inside of me. I've got another shut up inside of me. I'm walking in my power. I'm walking in my authority. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on, begin fighting in the spirit. Begin fighting your battle. Ooh, I told you, I told you, people of God, that you were going to be blessed by the woman of God. Baby, honey, that's my girl. That's my wife. You sure preach that thing. Elder Jasmine Robinson, I told you there's another shut up inside of you. We were so blessed to receive that word. And I pray that you've been blessed as well. So don't forget, be ready. Tune in next time because you never know what will happen on a greater change. You be blessed in the meantime. Next week on Greater Change Ministries. When you pray for power, what should you expect? Expect power. Now let me show you how to get it. You got to, when, when you're praying for power, you press in until your atmosphere matches your prayer. Now we're going to entreat the Lord together. We ain't got to wait till Tuesday. Some of y'all can practice while I'm talking about it. You start pressing in. Oh, my.